Hi, good morning. At last, some crochet. Oh, I am so behind on my crochet items because I've got different things to do and I'm just finishing off the final details for the book. We'll be out in July. I can give you a little bit more information later on, but it is almost there. I've just got to finish some sort of editing, send it back to the publishers and then it goes to print. So I'm quite excited about that. But for now, I decided we need to concentrate on Easter a little bit. And of course, our chocolate, our chocolate oranges, I was going to say then, our cream eggs. I've gone for a cream egg one first. I am going to be doing a chocolate orange Easter one as well. But I thought cream egg, everybody wants to get one of those. It doesn't have to be cream egg. It could be a Reese's egg. It could be a lint egg. Cadbury's do different ones as well. There's so many different types of eggs you can get. And this approximately fits all of them. Obviously, there might be a slight length difference or something like that. So while you're making these, keep trying them on the egg that you've got. And here is our little guy. Is him. He's a little owl. I've done a little snowy owl just because I thought he looked cute. Got a little tail at the back there. And of course, our cream egg, which I nearly called a chocolate orange again, <laughs> is inside there. So this is the guy we're going to be making today. I'll get the pattern up on the website as well. But please remember, UK terms, it will make a massive difference to your crochet if you don't sort of follow that. So you might need a conversion chart. They're really easy to get hold of. You can put them just in Google or they might be in the back of a book that you've already got. So we're going to make this nice, quick and simple little cream egg cover and uh, well, there's going to be more i promise you there's going to be more but this is what we're doing for now i will see you in a moment top down if you really enjoyed my video i hope you do please like subscribe and share it means a lot and i will put all the details for the website and all that sort of information down there as well so i'll see you in a second top down well, here he is, the little cutie pie that he is. I was really pleased with it. I didn't want to do a traditional owl colour, but obviously the pattern leads to any. Look great in like sort of a, a variegated browns and beiges, and you can add different colours in here. You can add all sorts. This was just the colour I personally decided to do. As you can see, da -da, there's our cream egg. Like with most of my sort of designs I do, I try and make sure, you have to get him right though, because this one's got a tail, so it sort of pushes him forward slightly. They do stand up on their own as well. So after the egg is out, you still have a little bit, little bit of fun there as well. So there he is with the egg. I need to take the egg out really, don't I? Because we need to re-measure. Because as I mentioned before, it is important that you keep checking the size on your egg. Because your tension could be different to mine. Your egg could be a different brand to mine. So this is an approximate pattern and this is what I have used. So do watch out for that. It does make a difference. The yarn I am using is a double knit yarn. So it's just a bog standard double knit yarn. Also, there's a bit of fluff on that one. Watch your yarn as well because I know I bought some yarn from the pound shop, for example. And this is a style craft yarn. The pound shop one is slightly thicker than this one sometimes it is worth paying out a little bit more but I know say if you're doing it for charity and things like that you need to keep the cost down just watch sort of the sizing for that that's all I'm going to say for that now for the crochet hook a three millimeter crochet hook so we need to keep it quite tight because he's quite small and I do have some sewing cotton there and the only reason I have sewing cotton there is we have some little buttons to go on his eyes now that is what I've put on but you could put beads you could put a little bit of felt, you could stick some little circles of felt, or you could sew on details, because please remember, again, if the recipient of this is younger, or you think there's any risk of sort of eating or swallowing or anything like that, you do need to be careful when you're sewing things on. But I have actually just sewn up, oh, not the camera, apologies for that, it's because I've forgotten to get my needles and I was just grabbing some needles. Um, so I've sewn my eyes on, but that is a personal choice there. My needles, of course, I need to sew my ends in. And then these two little bits. These are just little remnants of yarn. I just added these to the ear tufts to give that sort of greyish look that you do get uh, with snowy owls. But again, doesn't have to be done. And this bit is just for the beak. And literally, that is all you need of those. So we just pop those to one side for two minutes. And we're going to start with the top. So I'm going to put that on there because he's going to roll about. I know he is. I have pen and paper next to me as well because you know what I'm like. I always have to write things down. Tell you what I could do with. Can I see one? I can see one without hopefully knocking anything. 
Ta-da, stitch marker would be a good idea. Now, you don't you could get away without a stitch marker if you've got nice peace and quiet to crochet in. But if you're anything like me on average, when I'm doing a video, obviously I'm talking, so I distract myself, but in my general life, there's a lot of family activity going off, so a stitch marker is very, very useful as a product. It is done in amigurumi style, if you're not sure what that means. It's just worked in a spiral, so I do a round, I don't stop and start, I just continue round, which you will see as I do it. So don't panic if that's something you're not familiar with. I'll tell you what, when you do do it though, you will love it and you'll want to do everything amigurumi. So here we go. We start with our slip knot. Let me just move the little bits out of the way so you can see me properly. Onto my hook. The light has just changed outside. It's just gone dark again, so I'm hoping this is going to be all right. The light's been terrible. It's, it's a bit gloomy here at the moment. We've had a lot of rain. Um, then the sun comes out, then it rains, then it gets dark, and it's all over the place. So as you can see, I've got a bit of shadow there, which I could do without, but hopefully you can see the details where we are. So that is my slip knot on the hook, and I'm going to start with two chains, because that's how I always start my amigurumi. Um, that is something I will point out. I know some of you do like the magic ring. It's not my preference, and I'm also going to comment in the book that I've done, this is how I start. I don't use a magic ring at all. I just feel it's an unnecessary step because this is all you need to do. So into that first chain, we're going to do six double crochets. Remember, UK double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six stitches there. We're now going to do two into each of those six yeah there is there's quite a shadow there that's a, a little bit annoying but i don't think it's affecting what you can see i hope not i'll to when i play it back i'll realize so fingers crossed so we have two stitches into each of those six two double crochets that is so that is the first one of two that's my second one of two my third one of two number four of two number five with two and our last one number six with two double crochets in it so we now have 12 stitches so i'm just going to pull that middle one nice and tight i need it nice and tight because it is, the, it is the top of his head so you don't want to sort of see any gap in there if you do have a problem with that gap in sometimes it's because you've just caught the stitch or caught the yarn somewhere and it will do it you can actually just run that round afterwards and sort of just tighten it up and make sure it's fastened off properly. So we're now going to move on to the next stage, which is still a little increase, but not a massive one. I'm just trying to decide whether I like this light or what is actually, I think it's me that's causing the shadow, isn't it? It's my hand. I think I'm just going to pause there a second. Hopefully you won't see the pause because I'm just going to move the light around. because I think it's a little bit too intense there. So I'll be back in a second. I'm back. I think that's a little bit better. I can't see because I'm looking down through the camera, so I can't always sort of see where the light sits, but I think that's better. I really do. I'll, I'll find a guarantee there'll be a shadow somewhere, no matter what you do. But anyway, what I was going to say is we have another increase round where we need to get up to 18 stitches. So what I'm going to do is two in the first stitch, two in this one, then one in this one, a two, a one, a two, a one, all the way around. So you're going to do that two stitches in one, one stitches in the next combination, and you're going to do it six times, which will give us 18 stitches. So into our first one, we're going to have two in that first one, two double crochets. This is all double crochets at the moment and one in the second one. OK, and you're going to repeat that again another five times. So we're going to have two in the first one, one in the second one. That's our second set A two. And a one, that's set number three. A two. And a one. Set number four. We have a two. A one, that was set number five. On our last set, we have two in this one. And one in the last one. There we go. We now should have 18 stitches. Now, I am going to pop the stitch marker in now. There is a shadow there. It's going to annoy me that. I'm going to just not look at the camera. I think that's the best thing because 
<laughs> it's just like I'm trying to work out where it's coming from. I'm going to pop this gorgeous little stitch marker. This is one that I got from my Attic Spin Die Christmas Eve box. It's really nice, really pretty. So I'm going to slip that one in just there. But we do need to move that every few rows. Please remember that I'll probably go about four rounds. I say rows, they're rounds, aren't they? Uh, I'm probably going to go about four rounds. But if you're not used to sort of getting the positioning, keep changing this regular. That is important. So now we're going to have literally 13 rounds of just one double crochet in each. That's it. I mean, I know you're looking at that and thinking, well, how's that going to go over the egg? It will do, I promise you. And remember, yarn does have a little bit of a stretch forgiveness. Now, if you find, um, I'll show you again what it looks like on top of my egg. Can you see sort of the sizing there? Can you see it just sort of comes around? If your sort of tension is quite loose and you think it's really big at that point, maybe knock out one of those uh, increased combinations. So maybe give yourself 17 stitches. Sometimes, I say, everybody's different. You sometimes do have to adjust. Like I've been doing with a pattern from somebody else's, I've had to adjust my work because my tension's not the same as hers, for example. So off we go. We're going to do 13 rounds. So just one double crochet in every single one of these stitches and then pen and paper to mark down each round now i know some of you are just going to whiz off now and if you're doing that i will see you at the other end when we get to make the other parts of our little owl um if you're staying with me i will be chattering along as you know um if you don't want me chattering along turn the volume down and pop some music on something like that but uh, i will be chattering i am afraid so round we go Perhaps that little stitch marker was a little bit big. It is cute though, so I'm going to keep it. So that's my first round. So I'm just going to mark that down on my pen and paper. So you can see it's already starting to curl, isn't it? So just push it out slightly and continue round. So round two. As soon as you've got the body out of the way, the rest is so quick. Well, the body's not exactly slow. Um, again, thinking about slowness, if you are a beginner to this and you're not sure, quite sure what I'm doing, if you do want to slow me down in the settings, you can do, but just be warned, it does alter my voice as well. So I do sound as if uh, I've been drinking a little bit too much. It's a very strange sound. Um, or just stop and pause, stop and pause. I know when I'm learning something new, I find that's the best system, to be honest. Right, we're almost round for our number two. Right, I'm going to mark it down. I'm going to do one more round and then I am going to move my stitch marker. I must behave. You do sort of get used to not having to do that, but I would recommend if you're wanting to get your sizings right, you do move your stitch marker. It's as simple as that. So this is round three already. Yes, around three already. I do really need to, as I mentioned in the beginning, get on with my crochet. But because I've been finishing the detailing for the book, the publishers have just sent me the final copy to check for any sort of errors. Um, then obviously it does go off to the printers. Um, I've been sort of concentrating on doing that, I'm afraid. So that is why the crochet on the YouTube has been a little bit slow. But I've got lots of ideas in my head. That's round three to mark down. Now I said I'd move my stitch marker into so as i say i've got lots of ideas so hopefully we're going to get some work done and we're already thinking easter aren't we now obviously the cream eggs i mean i noticed cream eggs on was it boxing day not boxing day because the shops wouldn't have been open but it was the second i think it was the, the garage we went to and they had cream eggs out it was like mad i do love a cream egg i have to admit so here we go round four and they do make great little gifts or any type of egg like this make great little gifts for Easter, don't they? And I know a lot of you do do them for charity as well, which is absolutely wonderful. So round four, I said, didn't I? This is why I write it down. I've just looked across at my piece of paper there because I sort of chatter in. I sort of lose track. Right, so that is round four. And round five, off we go. I am really excited about the book. It's 
I've not been allowed to say too much because the publishers sort of say, well, you know, you can't say this, you can't say that until it's nearer the time because they don't want people sort of thinking, oh, I'll get that. And then they get bored with waiting, so to speak. Um, so I understand that. And it's been quite a long process. It actually started sort of uh, during COVID and uh, we are now within sight of it. It's the, the release date is in July. I don't know what date. I can't tell you that yet. Um, but... Uh, well, I can tell you, you can pre-order it on Amazon already. I didn't even know that. <laughs> That's round five. I saw it on Amazon and I went, oh, I presume I can tell everybody now. But I still, you know, because the cover, because it's a pre-order on Amazon, the actual picture on the thing isn't the finished object. So they didn't want me to sort of say too much until it had got to that stage because it's still not at that stage. But it is up there for pre-order. I do know that because I saw it myself by accident because I was looking for something else. And I was like, oh, hang on. <laughs> There's my book. So all you really need to do is put Sarah Scales uh, in Amazon or Sarah Scales crochet book, something like that. And you will see my old one. You will see my mini Amigurumi book, but you will also see the new one. But it does say it is pre-order. I will show you properly when I actually get it. Right, that's number six, and I think it's time to give this little move up. Uh, right, you can see the shaping coming. In fact, let's have a look on our egg. Let's not do too much. I always like to give my yarn a little stretch as well because it's quite tight when you're working with it, but it does stretch, so I'd rather stretch it to try it to make sure it's going to fit. And as you can see, we've got a nice fit. It needs to be a little bit snug. Because, as I say, it will very slightly stretch when you're taking them on and off the eggs. They do stretch a little bit. All right, let's get back on with this. Oh, my yarn's just dropped on the floor. Hopefully it will be okay. Uh, that was six. So now it is round seven. Off we go. I've got to think of some other... I ha Well, I already have some other ideas for the cream eggs. But um, again, if you see the book on Amazon, you'll see why I can't do some of the ideas because whatever's in the book, I can't actually do on YouTube, obviously, because that would defeat the object of having a book. And the stuff in the book does have more details. It's not harder. It is just as easy as any of the others that I do. Um, but there is more detailing. So you get more sort of information on them. Whereas with the videos... I try and keep them, that was round seven by the way, we're on round eight now. I do try and keep the videos simple enough that anybody can have a go. Because I do believe these are easy enough for people to have a go. Even if they're beginners, they may have to take time and maybe the size in or the tension might not quite work first few times. Um, but I want them to be able to have a go and enjoy the crochet as much as the ones that are more advanced. So it's, it's best to sort of keep it nice and simple. And again, you can add details to them yourself. So that's another good reason for doing them plainer. And then you guys can sort of sort of jazz them up as much as you want then. So uh, here we are. We're round again. That was round eight. We're getting there. I'm not going to, I'll move it on the next one. Round nine, here we go. When I get, when I've done ten, again, we'll try it on the egg. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I'm crocheting, I'll make something. And then I do find that when I make the second one, the sizing is slightly different. I know it with me when it's like this, it's because I'm trying out a new pattern. So I'm sort of messing about with it and altering it as I go. So this is a little prototype, perhaps we should call it. So then when I do my second one from the pattern I've written up, it does sometimes either be a bit tighter or things like that. So this is sort of like a practice run of the pattern, really, for me. So that's why we keep checking on the egg. But yeah, I know I, my tension does change. Or if I'm trying somebody else's pattern, I think I go really tight because I'm concentrating. And then uh, when I sort of do the second time, I know what I'm doing and I relax a bit. I think that's what does it. So that was round nine. We need to move this up, don't we, really? Be the reason we need to move it up is because Amigurumi is in a spiral. Your start position changes. So ideally, if you can count these 18 stitches each time and mark them round down, you'll get a sort of a more even sort of distribution there. So, but I, the stitch marker is just as good if you're happy with it. 
but you do need to move it otherwise it'll sort of distort where uh, oh beep beep car's just gone past um still can't find my microphone for the camera it was so, so chaotic over christmas i've popped dropped stuff in baskets and not really put things away properly so my room is a disaster zone um so i really do need to rummage i'll have put it somewhere safe but it does buffer sounds like that which is really good I mean, I don't know whether you did hear that or not, but I think there is a little bit more noise. So that is round 10. So let's have a look, give it a little stretch and let's see how he pops in. There we go. So you can see I'm almost at the bottom now. So I did the 13 rounds and I think 13 rounds is going to be adequate. It sort of just needs to come past the bottom of the egg because otherwise the egg won't stand. So you do need to just but not too much just get past it so that was round 10 i've got three more rounds to go when i'm going to say mine is finished but you do need to check yours i can't believe already since christmas how fast time is going i've got so many things to think about and i don't know it's like the year's already mapped out and by the time you've done one thing, it's it's going to be Christmas before I know it again. It's all good, though. It's all good. Right, that is number 11 round. Almost, no, that's it, number 11. So I've got two more rounds. I'm hoping the white's going to be okay for you to see. It's not a great colour to work with. Um, because it sort of like reflects off the camera a little bit, so it's sort of it's quite hard to see sometimes. I know taking photographs of him, as cute as he is, um, it wasn't exactly easy. I kept taking him, like, is it blurry? Is it blurry? But I think it's just the wall creates that sort of blur. Oh, there we go. So this is round twelve. We are on. So there's one more round after this. And then you, his body's done. That didn't take long, did it? You can see I do keep sort of stretching it. It's just something I do and I find it, it just works better for the work. Right, last round. Last round. I mean, there's only 18 stitches for each round, so it's not too bad, is it? Just thinking while I'm doing it which bit we're going to do next. I think it'll be the little eyes. Again, they don't take any doing. I'm sure you're looking at it and going, oh, I know what they already are. When you do do quite a bit of amigurumi, you can sort of do that. Look at somebody else's and go, oh, I bet they've done that. Right, now that's the round for his actual body. So before I do anything else, I just need to check the length because I'm going to add the tail on now as part of the body. So we need to sort of squeeze him. Again, you can see it's quite tight, but like I say, I need it like that because it will stretch slightly. So, yep, that stands. So your egg's not going to fall over. That's what you needed to check. So I'm going to squeeze that back out because it'll be in the way. We can take the stitch marker off. We don't really need that now. So I'm going to just pop it over there with my others and I'm going to do the tail now when I first did this one I did the tail separately and I'm looking well it would have been as easy to do it all in one so that is what we're going to do all in one it's always good so I'm going to do a slip stitch into the next one so I've got a slip stitch there and then I'm going to do two chain which is going to count as a half treble and then I'm going to do two more trebles remember UK terms into the same hole as that slip stitch was in yep so we go in we pull through we pull through we pull through oh well, we don't another one yeah so you can see what we've got now i'm going to go into the next stitch and almost do the reverse of that so it's going to be two trebles in the next stitch and I know I did two chain on the last one and I said it was equivalent to a half treble. So I need to do a half treble now, which is starts like a treble, but then we pull through all three. And can you see we just get a little tail sticking out and that's it. That's his tail done as well. I'm going to pull that yarn so it doesn't slide anywhere else. Just pulled it over my legs. So we've got the little tail sticking out 
at the back. So all you've got to do is sew these ends in for that one. So that was nice and easy, wasn't it? So we're going to do the eyes next. I'm just going to do one for you because you don't need to see me doing two. Obviously, he does need two little eyes. Another one, I know I'm just thinking then, I get distracted, don't I? Um, I've put buttons on there, but I know you sometimes people like a winky eye or a little sleepy eye embroidered on. I think that looks really cute as well. So there's lots of different options. You could do different ones, couldn't you, for different people. Right, we're going to start the same as we did the top of the head. So we have our two chain. And into that first chain, we have six double crochets. One, two three, four, five and six. So now we're going to do two double crochets in each of those six and that'll be it. So we have two in our first one, two in our second one, two in number three, Two in number four, in number five, and in number six. Oh, I'm not. So there are two in that last one. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to do a little slip stitch just to finish off. That is optional. It is just something I like to do because I think it just flattens that area. That's the only reason I do that. Now, as far as sewing on, I will mention this. Now, I get rid of this end and I'll sew that one in. I'll tell do in a minute anyway. And I'm going to use that end to sew on. And when I do sew on, I'm not sewing over these edges because I want this to stick out a bit. So I'm stitching it just slightly in, sort of more on that round where it's just six. So it's a bit of a weird one that you can stitch it flat, but I just wanted them to sort of stick out a little bit, give him a little bit more 3D. So that is our little eye. That is the one little eye. We're now going to do the little wing. And again, of course, we need two little wings. So we have our slip knot on there. Move my scissors out the way. And it starts very similar again. Six in one. So we do two chain. And into the first chain we do, which is why I call it six in one, six double crochets. One. Two. Three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to be doing two in each, like we did for the eyes, but then there is a little bit something extra as well. So we need two in each. Let me get that first one. That first one's tricky to see. If you're not sure, count from the back. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. It is there. It does sometimes look like it's before it, so you do need to keep an eye on that. One two in the first one, one, two in the second one, one, two in number three, in number four, number five, and number six right so we've not finished there that would be like another eye if we were doing that we just need to do a very basic can you see how he's got like a, a little sort of i can't think of the right word like a little wave to his his wings there so it's just a little bit of shape and it is such an easy way to do it and all i'm going to do is slip stitch into the next one i'm going to do four chain one two three and four and slip stitch back into the same one okay Slip stitch into the next stitch, four chain, one, two, three, and four, and slip stitch back into it. So slip stitch isn't like a full stitch, it just pulls it through. There we go. So slip stitch into that last one. I hated slip stitches. I have sort of got used to it, but I used to hate them. Four chain, one, two, three, and four, and slip stitch back into the stitch. And that's it. Look at that. So we've got this little sort of wavy bit on his wings which is quite cute oh or not let's put that there so now really we have a wing we have an eye 
we need to sort the beak out and the tufts but i'm just going to pause it a second because i think someone's going to knock on my door any second now so i'll be back in a second right i'm back i think i must have been hearing things there was definitely nobody at the door but then the weird thing is my son phoned at the same time so i'm hoping i've not moved the position too much of the camera right we were talking about what we did to do next so we would have two wings we would have two eyes so we've got the body the wings and the eyes done the next bit would be the beak which is a bit of a weird one i will show you what happens with it when i sew one of the eyes on so we do need to start obviously with our slip knot let me double check how many I did. I think it was four. You see, I've only got a bit of yarn there. I'm just going to do four chain. One, two, three, and four. That's it. And I'm going to fasten off. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put both ends of the... We're going to fold it. We will be pushing both ends of this through and tying it on the back. And it makes our little beak. Simple as that. We don't have to mess about. So that's our beak. So I think I'm going to have to sew some bits on to make sense. So we will just tuck those away. Now, I quite often like to work on the egg. So that's why I have an egg that's sort of used for sort of practice because it's never in any much state after I've done it. Um, so it's not one I'd give to somebody. So that's usually my treat later when I finish them all. Um, but you can see it fits on nicely. We have the little tail here. So that has to be the back, doesn't it? Now we'll take one of the eyes. And I said I would sew one end in. Oh, I nearly threw my needles across the room. Now, for my needles, I've got a few on there, I know, but I like them so they're sharper here, which does make the hole smaller, unfortunately. But I do think it's easier and neater to work with. So I do have to sort of mess about sort of threading them sometimes. It doesn't like double knit yarn. So I'm just going to get rid of this one and I'm just going to thread it through it through a few times i mean it's already knotted but you need to just make sure it's nice and secure so it's not going anywhere and we can trim that one off there we go so i'll move that out of the way and this is the one i'm going to use to sew on now i would recommend if you are now putting a bead or a button on sew it on now I find that the easiest way because it's harder to sew it on when it's on there so we'll do that one as well while we're at it so I have a length of cotton and now I need a sewing needle, which is this one. And how I'm doing this, I'm not going to make a knot. I'm going to put both, I've folded it in half. Both strands are going to go through, theoretically. I usually have a needle note closer to me than this. Right, I'm going to have to bring the needle closer just while I thread it. Oh, come on, you're not playing. There we go. In you go. I'm going to need a needle with a bigger eye. Oh, there we are, we're through. So can you see I've put both, both ends are through, which leaves me a loop at the other end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that through. It's not going through the button at a minute. Then push it back through to a different point. And then push it through that loop. So I've got no knot, but it's not going anywhere now. So I can push it back through and get ready for my button. Again, same with beads, you don't have to do it the other way. And back through. You want to make it secure, whether it's going to somebody who, you know, is able to have it safely like this or not. You do need to make sure it's secure either way. So I will go through a few times. Well, I will if I can see where the hole is. There we are. Me design a little bit wonky, right? So that's his eye, and then I'm going to tie it off at the back to make sure it's nice and secure with that piece of cotton as well. I just think it's a bit neater than making a knot that sort, so it's one less thing to sort of have to mess about with. So, snip or not, dear me, the scissors just cut straight through the wall, and then they wouldn't cut through that. That's really weird. So we have our little eye. Now I mentioned I'm not sewing around the edges. I'm sewing just slightly inside the edges, which might sound a little bit weird. So what I'm going to do with the yarn, I'm going to push it so it's like just below that last stitch. Can you see? And I will be sewing 
that area onto there, not this bit, that slight middle bit. So I need to make sure obviously his tail is at the back there. I think that should be about right. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit off the egg and then I'll just sort of fold it over. And I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just picking up a bit of yarn that's sort of like further in. So then a little bit on the egg. And a little bit just in. So what happens is this bit still sticks out and that is what I'm wanting. So it sticks out. So I'm not going to sew the whole thing on. I'm just going to leave that like that. You would carry on round obviously to get to the back and then fasten your yarn off. I wanted to mention the beak and the tuft. So that's why I needed to put at least one eye on. So I'm pulling that out because you're not going to be able to put the beak on otherwise. Now that looks pretty central. You do need to make sure you do that. I know I've done it before and put the eyes on and I've found out it's, it's sort of looking sideways. So I'm now going to have a look on how to attach the beak. It couldn't be any simpler. It's, it's nothing to faff about with. I mean, you could stick a bit of felt on there. You, you could use all sorts. There's different ways of doing little beaks. Um, this was just the way that I did this one this time. So I've just threaded one end. So that's the bit where we've done the uh, work. Now, when the eye's on properly, this will be easy to position. So I'm just going to go for it just there. I can always undo mine after the fact. Oh, that's one side through. Yeah, so don't pull it back through. Need to thread the other end. And I'm going to just do it just one stitch below, okay? And pull that through as well. Get the needle off. So we've got both ends pulled through, but in two different places. So make sure you're happy with how it will sit. I say you do need to do both eyes because then you'll know where it's going to sit properly. And then basically I just turn it inside out and tie those two together. So just make a little knot. I wouldn't thread the yarn through because black does show up through white if you're not careful. If you do try and pick the very surface up, you might get away with it, but it does have a tendency to show. So I'm not going to fasten mine off because I need to put the other eye on, etc., don't I? So I'm actually going to take mine out. But that's basically what we're looking at there. Now, as far as the tufts are concerned, uh, if you've done my other videos, you'll have done tufts like this before. Uh, I will just show you. I basically, these are my grey bits of yarn. So I have two bits of grey yarn. That's one for each side. And then I'm going to do two bits of the white yarn. Obviously, I've cut it oversized, but you could, it's so you can trim it down afterwards. So I'm going to do two pieces of yarn together. And this time, I am going to put them through together, I think. You don't have to. You can do them individually. So I've got a bigger, bigger eye there. And I'm going to choose where they're going. And I think it'll be about there. Now, I want to pull them through, but I only want to pull the loop bit through. Yeah, so I don't want these to come through. So now I can take the needle off, grab my loops, make sure they're straight. And pull the two long ends through the loop. So you get that. Yeah, looks very strange at the moment, doesn't he? Bless him. Now, I'm going to cut it to an approximate length. And then I actually separate the actual strands and that's what gives that sort of slightly fluffy sort of ness to it so you would separate all them can you see how it sort of makes them all wavy and then trim it down to the length you want it you might want them extra long you might want them shorter then i've just realized what we haven't put on we've not put his wing on have we uh, i'm putting details on without his wing bless him and again with the wing though i sew in the final end and use the inner end to actually just stitch it into position and that's just normal stitching onto sort of onto the yarn it's just normal sort of i never know what to call it some people call it a whip stitch i think it's a whip stitch that sort of just takes in some of the ends as you can see it's just from here to here that i've stitched on you can stitch it down further if you want but i sort of liked the fact that his wings stuck out like that so that's it for now i will continue with this poor little fellow and sort of finish him off make him look a little bit better than that um any questions you have for any of my work, obviously, please let me know. Pop a comment down below. I will try and answer if I know. Can't promise you I'll know everything. Nobody knows everything. But I will try and find out, perhaps, or something like that. So I'm going to put the other one back on. Oh, so we can see him. So 
hope you enjoyed that hope you're gonna make some if you are let me know uh or tag me on instagram or something like that because i'm going to be putting some pictures up of this little one uh very soon as well so hopefully you enjoyed that thank you so much for watching you know what to do if you enjoy my videos please like subscribe and share i know i do a lot of doll videos as well but i'm going to be building up on some of my crochet very very soon so see you all soon and thank you so much for watching bye bye for now